Hi, I'm Jackie, and I'm addicted to Survivor. Hi, I'm Molly, and I'm addicted to Survivor. And now the latest scourge on television, reality TV. And once again, I was worried about Jake at the end, but I didn't. I didn't feel the same sense of worry this time as I did last week. Like I felt like I knew he was going to be safe for some reason. I still maybe I've been asleep this whole season. I don't understand how Jake is so far on the outs. I don't understand that either because I I was under the impression that everybody kind of liked him as a person. And I don't know if that's them thinking too hard like oh he's a threat because he's so nice and because everybody likes him or what what that's about. There must be a whole lot of stuff they're not showing because at one point during the episode Kendra calls him when she's speaking to somebody else she says he's unpredictable. Yeah. Like what and I, I mean, can't think of a time where he's been anything but loyal, but I also know that I'm like a big Jake apologist, but I can't right. think of him being anything but loyal. Well, he's a goofball, but I'm, he's like some of the other players that we've seen. He's just a puppy dog. He's just looking for a home. He even called himself a puppy dog. Yeah. And then somebody else later on in this episode said he's erratic. I don't see it. No. I don't see it. I see him being goofy and having and not being afraid to show his personality at all. Uh, but I don't see him as being erratic. I mean, I don't see them being necessarily rude straight to his face, except for the rice thing. Okay, so I have a theory. I think that that rice thing, that that the reason that they showed that is they're setting up D and Austin on like a villain arc. I think they're going to try to paint them as the villains of this season and starting with that. And then there was a couple things that she said at tribal council that made me think, Oh, this is what they're doing with her story. Well, she had the mafia line. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. There was that too. So, okay. First of all, from the very beginning, Kendra needs to ditch those damn earrings i don't understand how her how they seem so heavy it would be uncomfortable to me after like an hour exactly exactly and if you keep wearing those things your earlobes are going to look like an old man's testicles get them (laughs) off your ears just get them off your ears and they're not flattering no but maybe they're like her good energy crystal and i get it I guess, but oh, you know, no, wear no, a no, necklace. No, no. Wear a necklace. No, 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 no. I was sad to see her go, though. I was not. I am so glad not to have to look at her bug eyes anymore, <laughs> because it, it it finally clicked, and I don't know if I've said this before. When she's talking, she's mm-hmm. she's. She always has a look on her face like she's looking at herself in the mirror and she's trying to make faces. Yeah. So she's always mugging. Mm -hmm. She doesn't even have to be looking at the camera, but she's always mugging. And it's not like Carolyn. You know, Carolyn had a more natural effect on how she outwardly was presenting herself. It felt very authentic, yeah. Right. Kendra... It feels like she's making monkey faces just on purpose. Mm-hmm. It's I can see horrible. that. Ugh. I can see that. And oh, there was a part at the beginning of the episode where I started to feel sympathy for, for Bruce. And I was like, what is this I about? I know. I know. Why and do they even include that? That was his, that was wrapping up his little, let me take a step. That was his Emily moment. We'll see. That because was I his. still didn't like him later in the episode. Well, that's the thing, though. You know, Bruce is like, well, you know, maybe I am being overbearing, and I'll have to ask my wife and my kids when I get home, and blah, 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 blah. 
right? Mm -hmm. Which I, I respected that, that attitude, and it's not one that you see very often, honestly. But then also, I feel like I would already start to maybe be aware of it out there. You know what? If his wife and his kid just said, just let him roll, just just let him let him carry on until he gets tired. But here's the thing. Do you think his wife and kids would tell him? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, absolutely not. No. No, they wouldn't. But I did feel sympathy for him until the next time he opened his mouth. And then I was, again, I was like, shut up, Bruce. I still don't want you here. You know, he's, his personality is kind of growing on me because, you know, there's, maybe it's because there's fewer and fewer people to complain about him. I don't know. <laughs> you know, because. still go so hard on the Keturah and Bruce thing. Like anytime that he does something goofy, they will cut to a reaction shot of her. Oh, you know what? By the time Couture gets out of there, she's going to say, look, there's a whole other dimension to me other than just that I don't like Bruce. She already is. She's already made TikTok saying that. Exactly. Like, she seems to be so frustrated with the way she's being edited. And I can understand it because it is very one-dimensional. And I don't think that she's one-dimensional. Exactly. <clears throat> So do you think that Austin has a crush on D? Yes. I think so too. 100%. I think so too. I, I think that that's going to be his downfall. I have that in my notes. I, I wrote it down like twice. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't, and, and other people have picked up on it. Mm -hmm. Well, and Kendra thing, mentioned it this episode. Right. right. But, but the thing is, is that, it's not like, you know, Matt and Franny, where they're acknowledging it on camera. Right. You know, it's just these little googly eyes and, and things like that. I don't feel that it's double-sided. I feel like it's a, an Austin-only vibe. I don't know that Dee necessarily reciprocates. I think she's just, it's just gameplay to her. How rude. <laughs> And I'm not really a romantic anymore either. No. <laughs> how okay? So, how would you if you got that tree mail? How would you have gone about separating into teams? I think they did a great job with it. I think they did a superb job with it. And and I think you know everybody everybody who had time to explain what they were doing and why they were doing it the way they were doing it. Mm -hmm. You know they were like you, you know okay, this is fair, and, you know, I, I'm not 100% comfortable with my team, but I'm good with it. You know, there was nobody saying, ah, oh, I wanted it my way, and I didn't get my way. Nobody mm -hmm. said that, right? Right. And, uh, you know, they could have drawn sticks. You know, the, there's a million ways they could have gone about doing it, but I like that they were all forthright and just, hey, let's pick, you know, the strongest people and then the weakest people and then mm -hmm. the middle people. And, and Drew said himself that he didn't think he was a strong person. And so that, and he put Jake on his team, which makes me think that Drew thinks Jake is strong. And I wouldn't have put strong under Jake's qualities. No. He's got little noodle arms. Oh. I don't yeah, mean that in a bad way. I mean, he does. He just has little noodle arms. Yeah, but he's built like a damn tater tot. He is. Oh, maybe it's because he reminds me a little bit of Daniel Dennis. Oh, God. And the way that he moves and is built and stuff. Oh, I think that might be part of it. He's built like a tater tot. <laughs> and once again, the immunity challenge was so overly complicated. It was like very... The stages to the things that you have to keep in mind of who gets what power when and... Ugh. Yeah, it was very overly complicated. And when they're when they were digging in the sand to find the ropes, if I'm not mistaken, I think Emily covered herself up with sand. It made me laugh so much. She was like all the way in the hole, just like the tip top of her head poking out. Right. Like how deep did she think those things were gonna be? I don't know. I don't know. But again, it seemed like some of them were more shallow than other ones. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I don't, you know, I'm sure that they make it fair, but the editing is just. Yeah. I, I, I liked how Jake seemed to make up for screwing up with the ball balancing by finding every single rope. Yeah. For his team. I loved that. Yeah. So when and, we, got, that, we got to hear Jake's whoa again. Exactly. And building the rope bridge. Yes. Doesn't it seem like Australia does that a little bit better? Yes, I think so. That was honestly, I think, one of my favorite parts of the, the challenge, though, because it seemed like it was a physical challenge, but it didn't really re rely on strength so much. It was more of a strategy plus physical. I don't know. I liked it. I feel like it seemed fair to more, more, more people than just strong people. It did seem more fair, but the rope bridge on this episode, it, it, it almost seemed too complicated, like they had to crisscross them a certain way, but in Australia, they don't have to do that. Yeah, I wouldn't. I my brain would have had a hard trouble remembering that. Like, did Jay, did Jeff have to come and like check to make sure they were crisscrossed right, or was I it just know. the honor system? I don't know. I think they should be more clear about those things. Okay, so at the end when they have to hold the discs up, yes. Why did we need to have wind chimes on the discs? I kind of liked it. I liked that it added a different element to it because I know it would, well. No, okay. no, 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 no. I think the reason they did it is because it amped up the tension. I thought it was ridiculous. <laughs> you've, already it was got, fun. <laughs> you've already got the musical score behind the episode to amp up the tension. <laughs> what, do you, what do you need damn wind chimes on the stupid things? For the in-person tension. Oh, good Lord. That's Jeff. <laughs> Jeff was kind of mean. He was, he, very he was like, mean. you have to do it till your arms go numb. Like, why would he wish that on them? He's, he's, he's a big meanie. Look, at least he didn't pull out a knife. <laughs> That's true. He did not pull out any knives at all this week, and I'm very proud of him. Very proud. So then we've got three sets of teams. We've got one that gets a roasted chicken. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. Right. Nothing and else. We've got another one that gets to go on a journey, and then we've got the other one that gets to go back and contemplate their lives. Mm hmm So they go to the roasted chicken, which I'm, I don't know where they got that chicken, but that was a steroid chicken. It was gigantic. It was stupid big. And I think it was funny that that's all they gave him. They just gave him a chicken and nothing else. No utensils, no napkins. Ice tea, no nap. No, they had napkins. Oh, did they? No, no drink. No drink. No fork. No knife. Nothing. <laughs> Jeff really wants him to suffer. Like he's like, all of these people are quitting. I'm going to make the people that stayed suffer. Well, Kendra made sure that everybody knew she hasn't had meat in 15 years and here she's been starving and now she's going to eat some greasy roasted chicken i'm sure she was uh oh, feeling yeah. that later i bet she was glad to have the the comfort of an actual bathroom exactly <laughs> so the first three out were kendra austin and emily which i thought i all of the teams were very well balanced katura but Austin and Emily. Yeah, yes. I can't read my own writing. Yeah. <laughs> Couture, Austin, and Emily. So they go to the logic puzzle. Yes. Okay. Which, also, I'm sick of the journeys. I don't want a journey every episode. Why do they call it a journey? I don't know. It drives me insane. I'm so tired of them going to the sanctuary for reward every time. Why? I, I don't. It's boring. Okay, so the logic puzzle is taking the numbers nine eight seven six five four three two one, mm -hmm. and you have three addition signs and yes. one minus sign, and you have to come up with a hundred mm -hmm. in three minutes. Yeah, there's no way I could have done that. Do you know the answer? No. 
I do not. Okay. So the answer is 98 minus 76 plus 54 plus 3 plus 21. Okay. Which is really not that hard when you think of it. All you mm -hmm. have to do is once you do the 98 minus 76, you know you got to add the 54, and then it's kind of like, well, duh, you need the 21 plus the 3. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem like once you figure out that first part, it just kind of all falls into place. Exactly. And, I, and I, thought, I thought it was cute that Austin was saying, you know, my MBA friends would never forgive me if I didn't get this right. <laughs> right? Yeah. I would have been totally like Emily. I would have froze. I would have froze. Well, that's the, but that's the thing. You're not going to use your plus signs until later on. You got to use your minus sign first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we already kind of touched on the Austin and D and the rice thing with Jacob. It was such a dick move. What a shitty thing to do. Yeah, it, but but again, like we said, why is Jake on the outs? They didn't give a shit about his feelings whatsoever. Mm -mm, no, they they were both giggling like school kids that just bullied a kid. Yeah, it, it was made, terrible. Yeah, makes no sense. I don't understand it. Oh, I also and, wrote down that I hate the dig. I hate digging in challenges. I'm so done with it as a game mechanic. It's so boring. Yeah. Unless you're on Australian Survivor and you're digging to fight over the sandbag. Well, yeah, that's, that's completely different. Right. But if you're just digging a hole just to, let me find something. Yeah. There ain't no um, stakes in that digging. The, the thing with Jake is, poor kid is so oblivious. You know, they were showing him how much burnt rice is on the bottom. And he was just happy to have that much. Mm-hmm. He really oh. is a puppy dog. Oh, God. But imagine being Jake, and you're at home, and you're watching this back, and you're like, are you kidding me? That's how they treated me? <laughs> yeah, it's got, I, it'll be interesting to see how it, like, whoever, when Jake gets out, what his interview is like. Like, I want to read what he has to say, which I will note that there wasn't an interview from Kendra this week, but it might have just been because of the holiday. It's because of the holiday. It's on Monday. Okay. Okay, good, because I missed it. I was like, I, I normally read this before, and it's not here. Yep. Yep, she was eating some more rotisserie chicken. <laughs> so oh, what did you think about Austin lying? I liked it. I did, too. I think he's a really good player. That was very smart of him. But it was, but it was funny. It was smart of him to lie. But he's such a little girl because he had to run down to the beach and go, tee hee, I was just lying, mm -hmm. right? So then once we get to tribal and <laughs> Drew is basically describing the fact that somebody could lie because we don't really truly know how many votes there are, Kendra's eyes are bugging out again. And her eyes are darting back and forth like, oh my God, somebody may have lied? You're kidding. Like the fact that she hadn't even considered that blew my mind. And she's an idiot. She's but naive. It, she's naive for sure. So back to the challenge. This is two episodes in a row where it came down to Julie and Bruce. The two oldest contestants, I might add. So is she a dark horse challenge beast? I think she might be. But I don't think she's a good social player at all. No, she's not, but nobody's considering getting her out. No, not right now. They're not. Nobody has brought her name up. No, I really, yeah. I really cannot wait until they get Bruce out, though. I, I I look forward to that very, very much. But I'm worried, like, something in the editing, I don't even know exactly what it was, made me feel like we might be ending up with, like, a Keturah and Bruce and Jake at the end. Which seems like a weird pairing, but who knows? Well, there has to be some. There has to be some mix of either 
D or Emily. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think they're going to cancel each other out before the end. No. And I think D is definitely perceived as more of a threat than Emily right now. And I think she's probably going to go pretty soon. Well, it might go that way or it D might be smart enough to get Emily out before she gets her. Yeah. I mean, it. it's really this, this, to me, this kind of stuff is so easy to see in hindsight, but mm -hmm. I can't, I can't see it coming to save my life. Well, I don't think that D really sees Emily as a threat at all right now. Like I, I haven't really, I can't recall a time where D even like spoke about Emily. Right. But D was focused on Kendra. Yeah. Now that Kendra's gone, she's going to set her sights on somebody else. I think it'll be Bruce. Well, with him having back-to-back -back immunities, it wouldn't surprise me. Idol. So we get to Tribal, mm -hmm. and Drew's babbling, and he, he mentions so much this episode. And he mentions the Sword of Damocles, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So on a couple of podcasts I've heard, number one, they mispronounced. Well, first of all, it was the episode title. Yes. Second of all, everybody on these podcasts are um, mispronouncing Damocles. How are they? How do you? How? Damocles, I don't, just, just butchering it, right? Uh-huh. And third of all, what nobody has mentioned, does anybody remember that this was actually a song in Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yeah, I was about to ask. Didn't they see Rocky Horror Picture Show? That was the first thing that I thought of immediately. The song e popped in my head. Exactly. It's in my head right now, in fact. <laughs> so, some of these podcasts were having to explain, well, what is the sort of Democles? I don't understand. <laughs> Even though Drew explained it. In the episode. He did a really good job explaining it, too. Like, he was very... He talked about this episode, but he was very... He did a good job with his words. Eloquent. Eloquent is the word I was looking for. He was very eloquent, and and he wasn't... He wasn't talking over people's heads. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I got a little bit of... Less Drew hate this episode. He's still... Well, first of all, boy needs to get some neosporin on those knees. Yes. Because his he legs is... look terrible. And then, torn I don't know if you saw. Up. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, because he is torn up. Mm-hmm. And then Emily, in one of her confessionals, she had like this bug bite that on her inner calf that looked like it had gotten infected because it had like a big red raised skin around Ugh. it. I was like, oh, my God, girl, get that looked at. I'm so worried about you. Just pop it. And also, why is Jake crying next week? No, he wasn't crying. Yes, he was. There was a very short clip of him crying, like sobbing on the beach. Maybe he had a bug bite and somebody popped. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Do his legs look as bad as everybody else's? I can't tell because his shorts are so long because his legs are so short. <laughs> I can't see his legs. So... Then at the end of Tribal, first they pull up Jake's name a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And then here comes Kendra's name over and over and over. And then Jake, like he's the debutante in the high school play, does this dramatic turn in his seat to look at Kendra. I'm like, what do you, why was that necessary? I couldn't tell if he was looking at Kendra or like trying to look at everybody else's faces to see who made the move. You know, like at first, the first watch, I thought he was looking at Kendra, but then I watched right before we recorded. And I think he was the, I think he was like looking at everybody else's faces to figure out. I didn't tell me that was not a drama queen move. It was something like it was very dramatic. It was very dramatic, it, like unnecessarily dramatic. Like, I was expecting him to clutch his pearls and <laughs> hold his hand to his forehead like, oh, hold me. Or at least give another, whoa, I can't do it. I can't do it. 
<laughs> I can't do it. Whoa! Oh, I did love at the beginning of Tribal Council when uh, D was like, oh, you, you just looked like you were going to ask how you were feeling. And then Couture was like, oh, no, I think you're going to say, all right. <laughs> and it was just a very pure survivor moment for me. Yeah, but to me, that's too meta. Yeah, I guess so. It's it's way too meta. It's like, we already know the script, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I love the script, though. That's one of the reasons I like Survivor. Oh, Austin does not have a good poker face at all. I thought you said he did. I think maybe he did last week, but he did not this week. When he was at Tribal Council... Wait. And I ha I did write a designation at camp, and when talking to people at camp, he has a good poker face. But at tribal council, he does not have a good poker face because he's just a little kid. And he's well, he's normally sitting in the back row, and I think he really thinks other people can't see his face. So Austin is twenty six. Oh, he's a little baby. Exactly. But Drew's only 23. Ugh. And I, I also think Kendra knew she was going walking into tribal council. I think she knew. Why? Just, ugh. I know it's going to sound all woo-woo and hippie, but I think she just had the vibe. Like, in one of her confessionals, she basically laid out exactly what was going to happen, and it happened. So she knew. She manifested it. Yeah, pretty much. Probably speaking it aloud like that made it happen. Her earrings were dragging her down. <laughs> they were the wrong crystals for that moment. All right. I feel like we did it. Oh, no, we have to pick. Who do you think is going to win? I'm, I'm still on the D train. I can't, I, I can't. I can't jump off that train. It hasn't, it hasn't gone over too many bumps yet. So, yeah, well, no surprise to anyone. I'm still team Jake. I still think he's getting a winner's edit. I don't. I don't see how he's going to ingratiate himself in with any alliance because he's not in one now, right? Yeah, uh-huh. So as the jury bench fills up, it, it, nobody, nobody's going to turn around, turn around and go, oh, that Jake guy, he was the clever one. He was the mastermind. He was, a, no. Okay, but remember what I said earlier in that I think that Caleb is going to be the one that's going to ingratiate the jury to Jake. Because here's what I think is going to happen. It's going to be like Jake and two people that did a lot of damage to the people on the jury. Uh, like... I don't, I don't know, a fucking D. Uh, okay, so say D and Austin because they're hyping them up to be the villains right now. They'll like nobody's gonna want to vote for D and Austin, and they're gonna be left with Jake as like the alternative, and they're gonna be like, why the fuck do we want to vote for Jake? And Caleb is gonna be the one to convince them all. That's yeah, but I, I don't. Gonna happen. I don't think that that's how it works at Ponderosa. I don't think that one person can flip all the dominoes to one side or the other. I, mean, I don't know. It's just uh -huh. vibe. <laughs> no, you just crushing. Jake or Caleb or both? Jake? Both. <laughs> All right. Now I think we did the thing. Because we said the stuff. I, I do want to point out that we're on day 17 of this season of Survivor and we're down to eight people and we're a day like 21 or 22 in Australian Survivor, and there's still two tribes of, like, nine people. It's... It's a ridiculous difference between the two shows. Yes, and one is a clear winner, and it's not the United States version right now at all. No. And that's all we have to say about that. I've been Jackie. I've been Molly. Stay tuned.